Stephen Stomsky with Stomsky Racing. Today we're going to demonstrate our Digidix, our digital degree wheel, and show how to set top dead center on the 911 engine. On our, on our prior couple of videos, we showed how to set the parallelism of the chains and how to set valve lash using our SRO97 uh, valve lash adjuster. Today we're going to use our Digidix, our SRO95, and our dead stop top dead center indicator, our SRO22, to set the top dead center on the engine, which is our step, our final step, just prior to actually setting the cam timing. Our first step is to go to the back of the engine on the flywheel side to set up our Digidix adapter. And, and then from that, we'll set up our, our display and as well as setting up our rotary encoder off of the adapter. The digital degree wheel comes with a few parts, including the adapter, the display, the torsion arm, the anchor bolt, the anchor stud, which includes mounted to it the, the rotary encoder as well as, as the cabling. Our uh, first step now is to go to the flywheel and you'll see us mount that next. All right, the first step in setting up our, our adapter is to this to gen put a little bit of oil on the, uh, the O-rings as it goes into the end of the, end of the crankshaft. The bolt hole pattern on our adapter is set up for either the 6 bolt or the 9 bolt crank and in this case we have a 9 bolt crank. Keep in mind also that the bolt hole center on the end of the crankshaft is not consistent. It's not a predictable bolt hole pattern and what we're looking for is actually just two holes that are across from each other, across center from each other and it might take you uh, just a little bit of spinning to find out where those are. But once the adapter is in place just go ahead and thread in the flywheel bolt and snug down the adapter. And you don't have to torque this down, just snug it down so that it's sitting flush up against the end of the, end of the crankshaft. Once you're set and you're secure with the adapter, the next step is to present the rotary encoder and the torsion arm and to mount that into place. And simply what you need to do is make sure that the flat of the rotary encoder is positioned in so that it will be able to be anchored down with the set screw. Once that's squared up, you can lock down the thumb screw to mount the encoder into the adapter and then spin your spin your torsion arm until the anchor bolt comes to the the stud hole on the crankcase and slowly lock down the anchor bolt. The anchor bolt is locked. Lock up the other set and then you're set to go from there and from here the next step is going to be to plug in the cable from the encoder and then we're going to spin the engine around and start working from from number one number one cylinder um, this double check to make sure that everything looks square and, and even here make sure things aren't uh, out of out of kilt once you, you want to be gentle on the encoder and present it evenly and predictably as you start to line, to line these, these parts up. And sometimes it takes a little, bit of, a little bit of adjustment to make sure that your torsion arm and your anchor, anchor stud are in place in proper alignment. Sometimes you have to walk, walk the encoder in at the same time as you're, as you're threading the, the anchor bolt in. But once these these are set up, uh, it's predictable from engine to engine how, how this goes, so it's not a, it's not a, lot, of, a lot of effort from that. Now the next step is we're going to go to the other end of the engine and set it up uh, from there. All right, now we're going to attach our display, and in a, for setting up this engine, I happen to have a flexible arm that I put my, my display on. It just helps me see where we are, but you can actually mount this anywhere whatever is convenient for you. In this case, then you turn on the display and an arbitrary number comes up, really completely irrelevant at this point. And we're going to zero out the tool a couple times as we're going along 
So you'll, you'll get different reference points. Our next step is to install a SRO22 dead, dead stop, top dead center tool into cylinder number one. And to start off with, I retract completely the plunger as it goes through the tool just to make sure we've got plenty of room for installation. Um, I have already backed the engine up a little bit. We've roughed the engine in a top dead center and set the cams as roughed in. And to start off with, I've brought the engine back a bit, probably 10 or 15 degrees or so. And from there, I'm now going to dial down the plunger until we contact the piston. And you'll know that when the, the plunger stops. Then go ahead and spin down the, the nut and, and lock that down. And the indicator is locked as well. Go ahead and I'm going to bump the engine just to contact the, 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 point, the pointer on the indicator. And at this point here, now I'm going to zero out our digital degree, our digitix, our digital degree wheel. And from here, I'm going to rotate the engine backwards. until I contact the top dead center indicator again. So now it comes up on, on our display is 329 degrees. Subtract 329 from 360 and you're going to come up with 31. But we only need half of that because we're splitting the difference between our full revolution. So now I'm just going to zero out the display, both absolute and otherwise. And now, we're going to back out our top dead center indicator so that we can rotate the engine 15 and a half degrees to find pure calculated top dead center. Now we're 15 and a half. Hit zero one more time, both absolute and included. And now we're at pure calculated top dead center and from here all our calculations as far as cam timing can be completed. Now that our Digitix is all set up you can remove the top dead center indicator tool from number one and we're going to get ready to go ahead and, and set up our dial indicator for number one to go ahead and measure the cam. But the beauty of the tool, digital degree wheel, is that we're able to confirm the accuracy of the, the timing marks on the pulley and we're able to easily and quickly mount it. Now we've take, taken a little bit more time to mount the digital degree wheel Digitix in place on this engine just to go in order to make the video. Well you see how quickly and easily it can be set up. We don't have to go ahead and remove the pulley if we wanted to put a larger degree wheel on here. Um, we don't have to remove any of the studs. We don't have to make an adapter. Uh, these factory pulleys the marks on the factory pulleys might be okay to go ahead and, and set some of the timing by, um, but for higher accuracy and for more precision, there, you often find, you can also often confirm with the Digitix that the pulley marks are, are off. So that's what the beauty of the digital degree wheel is. Next video, we're going to set up the cam timing for sure. Thanks for tuning in. See you then. Thank you.